My name's Jill and I'm an alcoholic and so grateful to be here. I just want to say I had my first drink when I was 15 years old and from 15 to 24 I went in and out of AA. I have probably relapsed 3,000 times but I've gotten sober 3,001 times and that's all that matters. Doesn't matter how many times you fall down, just get back up again. And it's interesting because big book, I love acronyms, big book. Believing in God beats our old knowledge. Big book. And I love it. The big book and Alcoholics Anonymous has saved my life. In 1991, I tried out in Tampa, Florida to be on this game show called American Gladiators. Over 3,000 people tried out and I was one of 12 to be picked to be flown from Florida to LA. When I got on the plane, I made a conscious decision. I will, I'm either going to go out to California and come back in a body bag or I'm going to go out to California and get clean and sober. Needless to say, I'm still here. So God watched over me and I got into meetings and got sober. And growing up, my father said, you know, you don't want to be a teacher. There's no money in teaching. Well, getting away from my family, I actually got my teaching credential. I taught at Our Lady of Malibu, taught a lot of movie stars kids, and I was very starstruck. And the program in Alcoholics Anonymous in Malibu is phenomenal. That's actually where I met last week's speaker, Mary, who's now and still my current sponsor. And it's interesting because I drank away five athletic scholarships, got kicked out of two colleges, went through four alcohol and drug treatment centers. See, along with drinking, I was also a bulimic. So I would drink, get drunk, throw up. I mean, eat, throw up, and then do the whole thing all over again. And so I was kind of an all or nothing kind of gal. So when I was sober and eating well, I was doing great. But then if I relapsed in my eating, I said, well, I might as well drink too. And so anyway, I drank away those scholarships, got kicked out of two colleges, came out to California on American Gladiators in 1997. I played women's professional baseball. In 2000, I played women's professional football. And I've got I've gotten my, my massage technician. I've been an EMT. I got all these certificates on the wall because that's what I was. I was a workaholic. I changed from drinking to achieving. And I realized there's a difference between my who and my do. Who I am and what I do are two completely different things. I never felt like I belonged in my family. In fact, I never felt like I belonged on any sports team because I always was a newcomer on the on the team. I was the first girl to play football in the state of Florida, so it was all guys and just me. So I created that pattern that I started a long time ago. And it's interesting, I just became part of the California State Guard and we had a Zoom meeting yesterday. And I was the only female with four males and it's like I have four brothers. So the whole thing is it's so funny how a pattern has created in my life today. But see, I used to hate myself and I realized everywhere I went, there I was. And I realized, oh my gosh, so learning to love myself because you guys did. You guys love me first. You guys said, keep coming back no matter what. Preferably sober because I would drink in the parking lots at meetings and then go in the meeting and sit there. I just, I just couldn't get, I just couldn't stay sober on a Friday night. It took me a whole year to stay sober on a Friday night. But then I was young, younger and everybody partied back then. And now <laughs> the funny thing is the thought of even staying up past nine o'clock today blows me away. And I didn't even go out back in the olden days until 10, 1030. And now the thought of, cause I thought this meeting was at night. So I went, oh my gosh, seven. And I thought, oh, then I'm gonna have to eat and then I'll be wired. And then, uh, and then I, so when, it, when I was found out it was in the morning, I go, oh, I picked today because tomorrow there's Martin Luther King Jr. Day and I'm off so I could sleep in anyway. But back to, back to my story, it's funny because I hated myself so much. And then through uh, working the steps, through getting a sponsor, you know, the cliff notes of Alcoholics Anonymous, don't drink, go to meetings, get a sponsor, work the steps, call three alcoholics every day. Okay, that's what I do today. I still average three is a good number. You know, three times meetings a week, three times working out, three times strength training, three times organizing at home, three times just three seems good because when you go down to two a week, it's easy to go down to one a week. And before you know it, it's easy, to, you know, I don't need those meetings anyway. And I had two and a half years twice and relapsed because I stopped going to meetings. 
meeting makers make it. You know, I have learned to trust God completely. Trust God, clean house, uh, help others. And it's so funny because when I, I have a shirt that says that. So trust God, clean house, help others. And people go, oh, are you a maid? I'm like, no, 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 I'm not a maid. But anyway, clean house, clean the internal house. And the acronyms, I love acronyms. What I've learned, you know, we have HALT, don't get too hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Well, I like to say, remember the morning and nightly news. News, AM, news, PM. AM, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. The news, nutrition. I need to make sure I'm eating like every three hours, you know, or I get low blood sugar and I don't think right. E, exercise. I need to move my body. And that means going out for and taking a walk, just as simple as a five minute walk makes a huge difference in my mental well being. Water, W is water. I need to make sure I'm drinking half my body weight in ounces a day. And most importantly, sleep. When I'm stressed out, I need nine hours of sleep. Eight is good, but nine's even better, especially in the winter when it gets dark earlier. I go to bed earlier. And the PM is prayer and meditation. I need to remember the morning and nightly news and incorporate that in my life. You know, when I first got here, I was so full of fear and rage. I was so angry at the world because I was angry and I didn't like myself. And I realized fear, and I'm sure you've heard all of the acronyms. F everything and run, that's what I used to do. Face everything and recover. False evidence appearing real or forgetting everything's all right. And the thing is, I have learned to stay in the moment. Be here now. Breathe in, breathe out. And I'm a teacher. I love what I do. I'm a high school PE teacher at San Diego High School. I absolutely love my students. At the end of every class, we say affirmations. And I try and incorporate them. You know, hey, when somebody asks me about something, even my sponsees, my sponsor, I imagine myself in a hula hoop and I go, you know what? I don't have any responsibility there, so I don't need to have an, op an opinion, so it's really none of my business. And I realize something I've learned in the program is to mind my own business, to work on me. You know, yes, I'm powerless over alcohol, and that is amazing, but I love that I could use the steps for everything. I'm powerless over my students, I'm powerless over traffic. And for me, I was introduced to AA in 1983. My sobriety date is February 5th, 1994. So I went in and out that whole entire time trying to figure out how to drink successfully. I was determined that I was going to be one of the people to come back to the program and you guys were going to take your hats off and go, good job, well done, you, you drank like a normie. I didn't realize until somebody explained it to me, the one is too many and a thousand isn't enough. I couldn't control my drinking while drinking. So it's as simple as this. Rather than going in and out for close to 11 years, I finally, my last, you know, February 4th, my last day of drinking, I honestly didn't even know that was going to be my sobriety date because I had relapsed so much that I had to go back in my journals to figure out when I drank to figure out my sobriety date because I realized, oh my gosh, this one's going to stay. And I realized that sobriety is a mindset. I make up my mind ahead of time. I've realized I've learned the tools of when I go somewhere where there's going to be some drinking, I make sure I have a non-alcoholic beverage in my hand. Nobody cares what I'm drinking. They just care that I have a drink in my hand. And it's that simple. I limit my time with family or places, parties, whatever. 90 minutes, I'm good. I go, show, take a few pictures, and leave. I realize I need to take care of myself. And just recently, my father just passed away in November of COVID. But I had made up my mind ahead of time that I was going to be okay when God decided to take my mom and dad. I've made up my mind ahead of time that I'm going to be okay. Now, if this would have happened 10 years ago, I would have gotten drunk. I would have gotten drunk over it. Absolutely. If I lost my father back then, because I didn't know the importance of a, having an ambitious and positive mindset. It's all about attitude. Sobriety is about attitude. And what is my attitude? My attitude is my thought life turned outward. Wow. When somebody walks in a room, wherever I am in a meeting, I can tell if they're positive or negative. And I can feel the energy. So I try and bring the positivity everywhere I go, regardless of how I'm feeling. 
you know, in the beginning, I drank because I liked the way it made me feel, okay? Then it stopped working for me. I remember my last relapse where I took a, a drink and I thought, yes, my best friend is back. And that ah, lasted 45 seconds. And then I was trying to get that back. And I realized for me, the best thing is to do, just don't, don't, even, don't even go near it. Just, and I had to, I've changed from drinking to being a workaholic and going to school and getting you know degrees because I needed to keep my time busy because I didn't enjoy my own company. Now, because I've worked the steps, I actually love who I am today. And it's so crazy because when I first got in the rooms, I couldn't wait to get married. I couldn't wait to have kids. And now that I'm sober a few 24 hours and this COVID and everything hit, I'm so grateful I'm single. I'm so grateful I don't have kids because all my sponsees are the ones going, ah, my husband's driving me nuts. Ah, my kids are driving me nuts. See, God will give us each grace for our place. He's going to give me strength to get through these 24 hours. That's why it says in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. That means strength to get through these 24 hours. That means the day is divided into three eight-hour periods. Eight hours to work, go to school, do all the things you need to do. Another eight hours to incorporate a little exercise, meetings, prayer and meditation, relaxation. And then the last eight hours is to sleep to get over the previous 16 hours so we could do it all over again the next day. And I have learned in the program that making my mind up ahead of time that I'm gonna look for the positive. I'm gonna have an attitude of gratitude. I mean, I had to drive up when I became part of the California State Guard up to San Luis Obispo, which I didn't realize I had to, which is five to seven hours depending on traffic. And I thought, oh, I'm going to dread this. And I went, no, I'm going to put some really nice CDs in and I'm going to listen to the whole way up and I'm going to enjoy, enjoy the journey. I made up my mind ahead of time. I was going to enjoy the ride. And it was such a great ride. I couldn't even believe when I got there, it was over with. So my family lives in Florida. When I fly to Florida, a lot of people are like, oh, I have to get on a plane. I make up my mind ahead of time. I pray for the people that are going to be sitting next to me that will have a good conversation. Like back in the olden days when you used to talk to people next to you, as opposed to everybody being on their cell phones and their computers and everything. You know, I think we need to bring back no electronics, especially in AA meetings, because there a lot of times in meetings down here, they're texting back and forth in the meeting. And as much as this has brought us together, I think it's separated us. You know, thank God. I mean, Bill and Bob, can you imagine them writing a big book back then saying, restraint of tongue, pen, text, tweet, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So it's great that we can reach all these people, but man, reaching out and being kind, I'm telling you, it's such a blessing that everywhere I go, I never felt like I belonged in my family ever, but anywhere I go in the world, and I've been to 28 countries in all seven continents because I'm no longer drinking, getting drunk, trying to commit suicide, going for ambulance rides, ended up detox units, ended up in treatment centers. I now am able to go and enjoy life and live life out there. And my biggest joy, and I could belong anywhere I walk into a meeting, I feel like I belong and I feel like it's family. And so it's like, I belong anywhere there's AA. I love it. There's a, there's a connection we get. I mean, I love treatment centers because you create 30 year bonds in 30 days, you know, and it's all about me and realizing that, you know what? We're just here to help each other. If God wanted us, wanted us by ourselves, he would have put us each on a planet by ourselves. The most important word in the fellowship is the first word of the first step. We, we can do what I cannot do alone. I can't do this without you. You can't do it without, we need each other. Just like our body, we need our hands and our feet and our eyes. We, each one has its own purpose. That's what we have to realize is stop comparing ourselves to other people in length of sobriety. It's all about just being a better person today than I was yesterday. I tell my students, you're only in competition with one person. My sponsees, don't compare yourself to other people. Nobody has your story. Nobody has your 
job that you're supposed to contribute to humanity. You are that important and that much needed in our world today. Realize how beautiful you are. And you know what? When you find your purpose and you find something you love, I, I still can't believe I get paid to be a PE teacher because I love, I play sports all day long. And it's, so, I mean, I, I prefer playing with kindergartners because I can fake them better, but the high school kids, they're faster, stronger. I love my students. And man, we just need to encourage and believe in each other and realize that good, the bad, the indifferent, everything, this too shall pass. And 85% of life is the mundane day in, day out stuff. Going to work, getting up, you know, getting up, taking a shower, going to work, going to the grocery store, doing these things. If I could choose to have a good attitude when I do these things and not just wait to be happy when the 15% of the birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, but choose to enjoy every part of my life. I get to wash the dishes today. I don't have to. I get to because God gave me food that I could eat these dishes on. I get to vacuum my house. Not that I have to, I get to because God blessed me with a house. See, I could change every area of my life the way I think about it. And with my sponsees, I tell them, I go, you have five minutes to complain about the problem. And then I want you to focus on the solution. Because what I've realized is what I think about, I create. So that means when I kept on relapsing back then, I couldn't understand why I kept on relapsing because the subconscious brain does not understand negatives. So when I kept on saying, I don't want to drink, I don't want to drink, I don't want to drink, and then I got drunk, I couldn't understand how that happened because my mind was thinking about the drinking. It doesn't understand negatives. So if I don't want this, what do I want? And that's what I need to focus on. And that's what I need to think about. And that's what I need to imagine already happening in my life. If you would have said that I was going to be over 27 years sober one day at a time in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous when I first got here, I would have said, no way. No way. There's no way. For all my suicide attempts, I'm so grateful that I suck at suicide attempts. I'm so grateful that I'm here to share the message and realize no matter what you're going through, this too shall pass. And I'll end with this because I know I keep trying to keep it to the 15 minutes and I have a clock behind and it's my pet peeve when people speak over. So anyway, I'll just leave it like this. I was regretting the past and fearing the future. And I heard my God say to me, when you're in the past with all its regret and shame, it's difficult. My name is not I was. When you're in the future with all its anxieties and fears, it is difficult because my God says my name is not I will be. But when you're in this moment, this precious moment, it is not hard because my God says my name is I am. And that's what I've learned is to stay in today. I multitask so much and then I start there and start there and start there and start there and I don't finish. So I've learned to focus and go, okay, let me finish here. Let me finish this task. Let me finish this task to keep my mind conscious of what I'm doing because I could actually be sitting in a meeting, looking at somebody, listening to them. And then you ask me what they shared. I'd be like, I don't know. Cause I'm actually out <laughs> grocery shopping in my head. So I've learned the challenge of keeping my head and my thoughts where my body is. So, you know, I'm just saying, I just want to say thank you for asking me to be your 15 minute speaker. I really appreciate it and realize that no matter what's going on, as long as the heart's still beating and the body's still breathing, there's always hope for change. And what's hope? Help over problems every day. Things will get better. I promise you. Don't give up and thank you for letting me share and I will let everybody else share. And I guess the topic is just staying in the moment, doing the next indicated thing. Thank you.